Hey, this is Asbog the Gaming Orc, and we're going to be talking about Stellaris. It's going to be in my Stellaris Let's Play video. It's going to cover. We're going to play Stellaris with this race for a long time in the game. We're probably going to go all the way to end game, and this is going to be in patch 1.5 slash 1.6. And we're going to be trying to play a new and interesting, different race, the Mind Flayers. And these guys are the Illithid. They're sort of from the Forgotten Realms uh, universe. Basically, we're playing an evil, xenophobic, author authoritarian race. I've played a lot of different races in this game, from peaceful space elves, to peaceful starfish, to the Borg, to scientific humans and elves, and uh, the timeless ones up there. You see them as the Holy Tribunal. So even a spiritual group. We're going to try something a little different, though, with this game. We're going to play the Mind Flayers. The Mind Flayers are, if you remember them from Forgotten Realms, they are a group of sort of alien-looking creatures with tentacles that come out of their face. They like to eat people's brains, and also they're psionics. They don't really believe in magic or anything like that. So there is a psionic uh, endgame with this. Uh, Stellar, so we can kind of we're going to go on that path. Basically, the mind flayers use their minds to psycho uh, kinetic, not psychokinetically, but dominate people through using their minds, and they're big into slaves. So they're using to basically build thralls, and this works very well for a game like Stellaris. So this is really the synopsis of them. Um, we're going to play more of a slave race. We're going to go try to round dominating other races and using other peoples as slaves in our in our uh, in our game. I'll probably uh, I'm not sure how much editing I will do for this uh, particular series, as it will be sort of a let's play series. But it'll be a great way to document um, our game here with the mind flares. We're going to walk through some of the interesting stuff with the mind flares as I do have a lot of add-ons and I'll just briefly talk about them as a race and I'll also set up the game and that's what this first video will be about and just ex explanation of what we can expect playing the mind flares. Let's go on to edit and just check them out. First of all they're a muscaloid species. Um, it's something I saw, I got inspired when I saw this a little species here. Uh, let's pull them up. They're right here under the muscaloid section. I have a lot of other particular species we could play for sure, um, but basically they're a subterranean species. I changed their background. They grew up on this Arctic world. Um, it's very frozen. And the Forgotten Realms universe, they, are, they live in the Underdark. So they're a subterranean species. When I saw this species, it kind of reminded me of them with their like little tentacle arms. And what they can do with these little tentacle arms is they reach out and they basically go in through the backside of someone's brain or they basically are able to inject their probe inside um, the host species and either eat their brain, um, which instantly kills them, or they're able to use their psionic powers to control and manipulate them as thralls. So there's two ways, and so they use these little tentacles of them, and that's when I saw this particular species, that's what it reminded me of. There's, of course, other species that have, like, sort of a brainy look to them. Like, these guys look more like mind flayers than these guys do, but that's okay. We're going to pick these guys. This will be kind of fun. They look a little more evil than the other races, I want to say, so... It's kind of interesting. Their real name is the Illithid, and uh, so this is their adjective and so forth. And the, my little biography I wrote the, over them while it's brief. The Illithid are naturally psionic creatures that hate almost every other species, mostly living uh, secluded beneath the earth. They enslaved other creatures using their psionic abilities and through directly injecting their tentacles into the host. They feed off the living neurological tissues of other species as well. So they're kind of, uh, I want to say, I didn't want to say they were uh, well, basically uh, omniv not omnivores, but carniv carnivorous, which is a trait we could pick up. I pick uh, Muscaloid 1 is they're basically, they're nameless. 
I just think it's the easiest one to do. Um, I have a lot of other names lists, but the real name list I want to get is sort of um, the Illithid name list, which I do not have, which is fine. Let's take a look at their traits. First of all, as being sort of a, most of the time when I'm trying to pick more of a brainy species, I make them weak. So obviously later with genetic genetics, we can remove that. They're uh, sedentary, uh, which means that they are they live sort of beneath the earth and secluded. Um, and some are they they don't migrate very far. They live beneath the earth. They don't really want to move. And so now with the evolution of wormhole technology, they're able to sort of leave after they've dominated and basically taken over this planet. They're ready to move out, but they're not really willing to leave and um, their migration speed is really slow, as well as resettlement costs. They're very intelligent creatures. Um, they're mostly brain creatures and they feed off the brains of others. They're decadent, they need to live with slaves and their culture revolves around slavery. They're naturally psionic, so they do possess, they already possess some of the natural ability of being psionic and being able to control other species with their minds, and this gives them an army and morale bonus, so it kind of cancels out them being weak, but being weak gives them minus five minerals. Um, they're subterranean. Uh, they get a fortification bonus. The species is native to caves and caverns, which often has greater protection from its enemies, but requires extensive excavation to be habitable. So they have a building speed, uh, minus 10%, and then they have fortification defense bonus, uh, plus 50. So they do live underground, and that's the background we've chosen for them as well. We'll get to that. Um, one convenience trait I usually pick up is enduring, so it kind of takes me to as I begin to work out the genetic pool, it's a typical most trait I get. It's just a one point trait. It gives me plus 15 years to their lifespan. I find that if you don't pick this up, most of the time uh, your leaders and scientists and so forth, they die pretty quickly. Um, so while they are weak, they do have an enduring quality to them as they can live to be very old. So they have a lot of traits. Um, this is more traits than I would usually pick up for most uh, from most species, but at the same time, uh, they're really pretty cool. They're pretty diverse. Check out the ruler. There's a lot of other things we could pick up here with some of the add-ons, but I feel like this is really uh, quite good to get. I feel like this kind of captures who the mind flayers are. The ruler, um, they're going to be ruled by an emperor as they are a, I believe, an empire or a imperial system. So the name is sort of irrelevant, so they have Emperor and Crown Prince. I just picked Phenotype 1, which is what they look like. I don't really, we can't change the hairstyle or clothes, so they don't wear any. I can change the color variant, but I like the black one there, that's fine. Anyways, our ruler will eventually die. And for you guys with the room add-on, well, this is room 104. So it kind of looks like we're in the caverns here of where the mind flares would live, so that's kind of cool. The home world is here. And the, uh, this here is the name of the star system that they're in. They live in an Arctic world because it seems more appropriate and evil. Um, I pick a Muscaloid City, and I can pick a bunch of other cities here uh, from the add-ons that I have, but it's a Muscaloid City. It's fine. On to the government and ethics, sort of the important part. Um, so... This is pretty interesting. We pick fanatic xenophobe. I normally do not play a xenophobic race as much as I do. Um, originally in the Forgotten Realms, they are ruled by a super brain, um, sort of like a collective consciousness. And when the mind flayers die, they believe that they will form, be formed immortally with the super brain. That's really not how we are going to play this. Um, the super brain is super old and has very powerful uh, psionic abilities. Um, we're just going to have a ruler. So you don't have to fit, strictly fall, follow the uh, Forgotten Realms lore and canon. So we're going to kind of make our own in a way. Because these guys don't look exactly like Mind Flayers. But we're getting to the principle of it, which is pretty cool. Um, they also have a caste system. So they have reduced slave. Res the resettlement cost is my 20%. Remember, they are... 
a little sedentary, but they want to be able to, they're basically slave traders in a way there. They control slavery, but they're very xenophobic. So they can do all the things they can. It's pretty cool. They, um, they can purge and displace aliens, can enslave aliens. Um, we're not going to be friends with too many um, other species. We don't give aliens full citizenship or military service. Um, we also get bonuses to rivalry, and our border range is increased by 30%. So we're kind of in the supremacy uh, route, but really we're in the slave route. That's what we're kind of doing with this particular species. So it'll be kind of interesting. I just think that they would be kind of into um, power struggles and political cutthroats as a lot of these mind players are trying to get at each other. I picked it up. It's kind of cool. Um, I could pick up Slaver's Guild um, instead of cutthroat politics. It probably makes a little bit better sense. Um, so we can get better. Uh, since this is really a slave society, that's kind of what I want to do for pick up. But we can pick up civ more civics later on in the game as you know, as our species maybe changes uh, as the game commences. We also obviously pick up uh, Secretic Evolution. Um, a, a second species forms an integral part of the society. They are big and strong, and most of them have intelligence, particularly dimwit of a dim-witted child. Ancient wars have called their species and most of, the, of most of their aggressive tendencies, leaving them quite servitile. So that's pretty cool. We're going to start off with a few slave um, pops, four pops. This is a new part of uh, the Utopian expansion. Our empire name is in English. I'm not going to use it. Uh, uh, the Illithid Empire or the Illithid Conclave or something like that. But we're going to be called the Mind Flayers, just to kind of keep it simple. Our flag is just an octopus with tentacles. And I just sort of have a little dash there in between it with a red and black sort of color black for sure because that's how they look like a little bit and they live in these dark caves and red because red is pretty evil kind of red eyes and so forth we're going to use projectile weapons but projectile weapons it's okay later on you can switch to any one of these missile weapons apparently is the one of the most powerful to start with because there's no point to point system or point defense systems that you can use um, energy weapons are also really cool to use, but they just seem like they would be using uh, projectile weapons. So that's what we picked. Um, we're going to use wormhole travel just because it's really cool and interesting, and that's how we're going to play it. And the way our galaxy will be set up, it'll kind of give an interesting feel to the game as well. Ship appearance. We're going to pick muscaloid, though we do have many other options of ships not even like elven ships and things like that that have not been used or the AI ships which I used to play the Borg or the Elrich ships which are kind of cool by the interdimensional beings. We're going to save this and uh, click yes and this is the one we're going to use. We're going to click done. Now um, I was doing some reading about basically the galaxy size. I played with a thousand star galaxy. It's a uh, pretty big for sure. Um, so what it is is that if we use, I have a, this is called Epic Galaxies and I have a bunch of other mods that make the galaxy look better but the huge galaxy has a certain width to it and the uh, mod author says that there's about a 450 width to the game. So if you go over a huge number of stars typically um, you cannot, uh, you're not going to be able to, it's just going to increase Increasing this now to say a higher amount is only going to increase star density. We are the density per stars in the in the region. We're going to just play with um, 2,000 uh, stars, and uh, I think that's going to be pretty good, uh, which is fine. Uh, basically, it will probably double the density of the stars, but also what we'll do is we'll double, more than double the AI empires. Um, so let's reduce that. Originally, I played it on 3,000 um, stars, which is triple of what the ba the vanilla largest galaxy size is. And that had a lot of AIs in there. And basically, the star density increases, but the distance between you and other AI empires is not that significant. And you're pretty much 
you don't have a lot of exploration and discovery that you can do. Not to say that you can't because it's, there's a lot of star density, but land grabbing becomes a lot more important. So I think this is gonna be the time where I pick uh, uh, 2000 and also 32 AI empires is really cool. Remember, lots of new species come and go too in the empire. So it just won't be 32 as the life of the galaxy continues. Um, max AI starts, I think it's been increased a little bit. We have Max Fallen Empires. What I noticed is the mod creator to this game reduced it down to three. And in the next 1.6 expansion, the Fallen Empires will scale with the galaxy as well as the end game crisis. So theoretically, um, Fallen Empires will be stronger than uh, with the larger galaxy sizes that are modded up. Habitable Worlds, we're gonna have it at 1x, which is totally normal. AI aggressive is normal. I think the game is pretty challenging as is, unless you start to really snowball the game. But even then, that game can probably... Um, uh, we're going to be playing as hyper-xenophobic, a fanatical xenophobe. So I think the game's going to be... Uh, a lot of races are going to be very challenging, and we're pretty, pretty much going to be in conflict almost the entire game. So this game uh, against maybe multiple empires. So I think this game could be quite difficult. We're allowing any FTL method. Empire placement is in clusters. We could also do it randomly. But that's fine. We want to cluster advanced neighbors off. I originally had advanced neighbors turned on, and it's just not a very fun game. You get next to like a really powerful dude, and his fleet size like triple yours, and then he just comes over and crushes you, or you have to use an exploit for you have to basically try to cheese doodle him by sending your ships in and out of his space several times as you know and what I noticed the computer does too is they overbuild their fleet capacity so their fleet power is much higher they really ignore a lot of other stuff that's fundamental to the game and um, the AI is constantly being improved on we don't need to make the game I've had it where advanced neighbors has been a negative end game crisis on for sure we also have multiple crises enabled so we could have many other crisis besides just uh, say the unbidden which I have actually never played but we are going to go the distance with this game we are going to keep going and we're gonna have a lot of fun playing it so there's several routes we can do with this game I'm turning Iron Man mode off just because of the save span that it does with the mods that we have with the game we re won't really need to do it if uh, we only have one save version of the game the game that save version gets corrupted we don't want it to do it but trust me I will not cheese the game at all. I am going to play it, and I will not revert to any save. And also, they only keep about 10 versions or so, 10 saves of your game or so. So they only keep the last 10 years. And basically, I've read where people reach the end game crises, and if they don't uh, do them correctly or they don't handle it correctly, it doesn't matter how many save games you have because basically the game is over because you're just falling so far behind so one cool thing we're gonna put in here also is we're gonna change the galaxy shape to a spiral forearms so we're gonna have a forearm spiral galaxy and we're gonna check it out and see how it looks The reason why we want to choose a forearm spiral galaxy is because the Milky Way has about four to five arms of a, of a galaxy and we want to kind of mimic what a real galaxy looks like. So um, there's a few options here, um, one that I have here and uh, so the NCS player challenge, these are some add-ons, basically the NCS player challenge says hey we want to um, basically have the AI technology constantly be at our technology level. So there's really no excuse. If you want to have extra challenges in the game and you want to have the AI constantly at your, at your tech level um, to make the game more challenging. But no, I'm going to say no because I want to just, I think the game can be challenging enough as is, but for some people that are really hardcore, that's okay. You know, I want to have playable guardians. This is another option and add-on I have. So this means of when I kill um, the uh, uh, Leviathan, that means I can play as one. Since we're gonna do it, and then I want to play with 100 chance of all guardians spawning. So this is about six or seven Leviathan events, 
and I want to have them all spawning in our 2000 star system galaxy. So I want to experience the entire game if possible. So now we want to have uh, what do we want our species to be on our frozen planet of Seer. I think I want to pick a reptile species and this select appearance is perfect and I think this is great and we'll call him the Ewokian <laughs> like the guys in Star, Star Wars. Nah. We'll pick um, the Ob Obavin, Obavinai. So that seems kind of nice uh, to pick. Remember we're using sort of a muscoloid name. And also we're going to just check out the galaxy and see how it is. So here's the four spiral arm galaxy. I'm just kind of over here in the corner of the galaxy. As you can tell, I have some few extra mods to make the game look really awesome. The core is a little dimmer. There's also planets in the core. Um, and as you can tell from being a 2000 star system galaxy, if I zoom out, um, I'm still pretty small. I played it on 3000. It seemed like it was just about the same size. But what happens is, as you can tell, there is a lot of planets around me. Because so what happens when you play with the denser star system is that, and also with the arms, um, it's harder to cross sometimes from point from uh, sometimes it's harder to cross over from these points or there might be a straying uh, solar system or star system in here. So I think the arms add a little extra I want to say uh, strategy to the game as it makes it more difficult and I think our wormhole technology will help improve that. Most people play in elliptical galaxies just to simplify things but I think adding spirals to our galaxy is going to make it a little better um, and actually more realistic. And that's what we're kind of aiming towards is more realism. However, uh, the real Milky Way galaxy has a hundred billion uh, or something like that or hundred billion stars. So we're only at 3,000 stars. So while this game is going to be pretty cool, it's nowhere near the amount of... Uh, actual stars in the galaxy. Now let me show you a little bit of my starting, uh, what I do when I start the game here. Uh, for physics research, I start up all my research here when the game is paused. And I evaluate each one. I can just tell you briefly what it was. We're probably going to have a lot of AIs um, attacking and so forth. And we're not going to pick solar panels up because we are not going to um, basically be doing a lot of power, even though power is really important or energy is really important. Uh, it's more important for AI cultures and we're just going to probably be more defensive. We're going to need to kind of develop shields and armor and things like that to begin. This is really good. This guy right here has a spark of genius which is ten, plus 10% um, research speed. Remember our race does last a little longer. We're not super mortals uh, but it helps. Um, spark of genius is the best one you can get. It gives you plus 10% research speed as you can see it's his research speed is plus 12 percent pretty good um remember our we're kind of uh, we're not slow breeders but growth time minus 10 percent is really important especially if you're trying to expand out also uh this one is very good for just getting monthly influence and uh, i think we're going to pick up uh, this one just because it's kind of easy to get also uh the last one here for engineering we can pick up uh, ion thrusters is probably the one we want to go with even though picking up the extra space station is really really good the ion thruster affects all ships though and as we start building more ships it's important for them to have increased speed within the solar system and they can also reach other stars quicker so our scientists can reach other stars quicker so i think ion thruster is probably the way to go we want to First thing I like to do, no matter what I'm really playing, is I like to build a science ship. And that means that I'm going to be producing a scientist. Then I take the current ships I have and I split them up. I hit the letter V command. And I'm trying to explore. I want to explore uh, my... First of all, I want to have send ships. So I don't want to send my scientists into hostile uh, solar systems as best I can. So as a wormhole species, I send them out into three random directions just to try to you know have them uh, explore out because I don't want them running it my science ships to run into them and be destroyed even though we are not playing Iron Man 
I want to really treat this like an Iron Man game. I just don't want to get spammed out. Now they are changing that in 1.6 to allow that. Uh, in 1.6 they are changing it so they're going to have quarterly saves for Iron Man. So maybe in the next game, uh, after I'm done playing this one, if we conquer the galaxy with this species, or just have a lot of fun with this species, we can actually uh, play. Um, we can uh, play the next game in Iron Man. So I'm just sending these guys, just programming them out. And I'm sending them out here, and it's kind of annoying. I have to click this one. It's not. It doesn't want to be clicked. And you can tell there is a lot of stars. So we're gonna have twice as many AIs and about the same amount of galaxy space as a large galaxy. So it's not gonna feel as patchy and sort of unknown as before. That's just generate rogue planets with more star classes. This is another options I have. Yes, we're gonna do it. It's gonna create a new star system. And you can see there was a few little star systems that popped up with some more rogue planets. I have another mod in the game which pulls out theoretical stars as well as realistic stars. So we are going to see a, a lot more star systems than normal. A new air has been selected to the Empire. One thing you can do is you can recruit a guy, uh, but as we're running into sort of unknown systems, I don't want to get crapped on really by any... We didn't cover these ones. I don't want to get really crapped on by any, uh, you know, pirate ships or anything like that. So, and also, what I do when you're sending off your guys to a single system, you hit the C and name the planets. The sensor range will tell you if there is a planet nearby, which is very helpful, of course. As you get to maybe um, as you begin to survey those planets, basically we are prepping that out. One, complete. one thing I forgot to do here. Situation log updated. So we're just encountering these other aliens, races that are ready to be taken over. And you can see as I just sent this guy here, one thing I did not do with my current science ship is I should have explored right away, that's okay. So basically the current science ship is exploring. As you can tell, the uh, my current military base is 1.3K. So that kind of gives you a base reference to how much military power you really need to start even attacking other ships. Um, so we, our other science ship is recruited. We need to recruit a scientist for that ship. Now what I'm looking for when I'm recruiting new scientists is this one. Um, we have uh, uh, Maniacal and then we have uh, Spark of Genius. So what I can do is I want to pick up this one. Now you're like, that's, you're like, Asbog, that's not the right one because that's not Spark of Genius or something that really helps. But you know what this does? This helps with... Um, I can look at the other ones here, and like for instance, this one has survey speed plus 25%, so I can just make this guy. Um, he's actually commanding that, but I wanna try to find, um, like this one, research speed materials, that one's whatever, I can just get rid of that one. And now I'm going to actually take and replace that guy we just found, who's actually more geared towards research speed, a plus, um, a flat plus 5%. So I'm looking for the spark of genius, or the maniacal ones to really uh, to replace as my primary researchers. Now with this other scientist, what I do since this guy is currently doing it, is I want to try to research, first of all, habitable worlds within the current system. So there's a pirate quest here, and it looks like we found some pirates here, or an alien menace. We can take a brief look here. One thing I've removed is it really looks like it dimmed down, but we get to see the gravitational ring around them. And it looks like this is a military base of some kind. It looks like we have a swarm of, of guys with the military base here that are on standby. But that's why I send them out, uh, these beginning ships out, is to find this so my science ships don't get just annihilated. So my current science ship is we want to basically survey all the habitable planets within our current zone. And this is good. We got uh, And then I send my construction ship to basically, it's pretty simple. I have them build. I want to go for minerals first, but I just start basically building it right away. One cool mod you can see I have with the system is you have this beautiful background. It actually looks like we're in space with all the nebulae 
everything it's very beautiful so these are some really awesome mods to help improve the game as well as I've removed all the junk all the um, the, the orbital stuff around the planets um, I don't know if they even the planets even rotate or move around uh, the systems or orbit around the system because I mean you think about the time of the game every second is a day and nothing's really moving but you can actually zoom up on our home planet and they have beautiful I have a beautiful night lights mod and you can see the uh, one side of the system here they see the beautiful lights of the uh, system there which is pretty cool yeah, there's stars other uh, planets in our system here so you can see that one's kind of pop a populated system that's pretty cool that's another add-on that I got beautiful night lights as we can zoom up a little RP there so that's really what I do um, when I start off the game on the first few uh, years I'm doing I'm looking for minerals mostly and we will continue the next game this was just an introduction to the race as well as the solar system that we'll be playing or I'm sorry the galaxy that we'll be playing in and so hopefully we'll have a lot of fun with this uh, species enslaving other races in this game and uh, we'll have a lot of fun being kind of a dominator like subscribe and comment and uh, like for subscribe to this channel if you want to follow the rest of the series or other let's play videos uh, thanks a lot for watching bye bye